On a completely different note, I want to point out that the Toby book includes records from the marriage register of Reverend Joshua Webster. He was a very active Methodist minister who lived at Hilton, and he solemnized many marriages in the area during the period of the 1830s to the 1850s. Here we see the list of marriages for 1836 on page 127. Well, this is critical information that often is very helpful in family history research. The Toby book includes material up to about 1939, and the later part of it includes lots of information about the Great War. One newspaper clipping on page 681 stood out for me. It includes a very dramatic depiction of good versus evil, an approach that was often used to motivate people to participate in the war effort. But if you read this small print, it's a bit interesting what they were actually promoting. We beseech you, women of Canada, to dedicate yourselves and your families to war service by signing the Food Service Pledge. The sacrifice is not great. We merely want you to substitute other foods for part of the white bread, beef, and bacon your family now eat. When baking, use one-third oatmeal, corn, barley, or rye flour. Or order some brown bread from your baker each day. Substitute for beef and bacon such equally nutritious foods as fish, peas, lentils, potatoes, nuts, bananas, etc. Third, and this is most important, positively prevent the waste of a single ounce of food in your home. A food service pledge and a window card has been or will be delivered to your home. The pledge is your dedication to war service. The window card is your emblem of honor. Sign the one and display the other. Wow, that's very powerful. This demonstrates how far the war effort permeated every household and called on every person to participate in whatever way they could. This also demonstrates that you just never know what you're going to find in the Toby book you can obtain a PDF copy of the Toby book for yourself at my website at www.danbuchananhistoryguy.com. On the menu, just click on History and then the Toby book. Remember, as the note says, this is a large file. It's over 30 megabytes. So, you know, be patient. It may take a few seconds to download. Uh, I do recommend that you don't send it as an attachment to an email. It's too large for that. But once you get the file on your computer, you can open it up and use it as much as you want. For those who are not familiar with the features of the PDF file, the most powerful feature is search. That's the little magnifying glass. Um, you can enter a name or a word, and it will stop at every instance of that text that is found in the document. You can use the up and down arrows to move through the pages, or you can use your mouse or keyboard, whatever you like. And over the right, you can use the plus and minus keys to decrease or increase the size of the text on the screen. Increasing the size of the screen is very useful for things like newspaper clippings, which are often pretty small and difficult to read. This is a very powerful tool for managing a large body of information now remember, the Toby book is 786 pages. Now you may understand why I won't shut up about the Toby book. It is really such an amazing resource, and we are so lucky to have it in our local library. We can be grateful to Mr. Toby and Mr. Sprung and Miss Nyland for creating such a useful document, and to the Brighton Public Library for housing it and making it available to us. I would only recommend that if you're going to use material from the book, that you attribute it properly to the Toby book. Sure, I know most people aren't going to look in the Toby book, and that's fine. But I do think it's useful for people in the community to at least know of its existence and to understand how it is being used. It is one of the first icons on my computer screen, and it gets used a lot. 
I often think that if it was a paper book, it would be falling apart by now.